Hi everyone and welcome to another tutorial on the Unity 3D Scripting API series and we're still talking about mono behavior event methods and in this tutorial we'll talk about the update method. Now the update method is called continuously every frame. So it's good for receiving inputs from the user continuously. Anything that needs to be changed or adjusted regularly will be written inside the update method. For example, timers. Now the update method is also used for non-physics based movement. For example, non-physics based character controller movements in 2D games. So anything that doesn't rely on uh, physics forces, for example, gravity. Update method depends on a game's refresh rate and the intervals between each update method call are not regular. So if one frame takes longer to process, then the next update call is delayed. And in this diagram out here, you can see that the gaps or the intervals are irregular. So if one frame takes longer to process, then the next update call is delayed and this interval will be much longer. So we can see that the first update call, the uh, interval between the first update call out here and the second update call is much longer. Whereas the interval between the second update uh, call and the third update call is much shorter. And let's go ahead and have a look at the update event method by writing some code. So I'm in my Unity 3D editor and first let's make a game object. So in my hierarchy window, I'm going to right click and 3D cube. Now let's also add a script and let's go up to assets create and c sharp script so this is one way of creating a script or you can just you know in the assets folder right click create c sharp script and i'm going to call my script cube controller and notice that i'm using the pascal uh, naming convention to name my script so in pascal case uh, what happens is uh, that the first letter of every word is capitalized and this is a naming convention it's called pascal case okay so another point to keep in mind is that in unity 3d a script is actually a behavioral object because it's going to give your game object some behavior and for us this behavior will be to move to the left on the x-axis by one um, unit per frame continuously okay so in order to impart this movement of moving to the left we have to add the script to the game object and the way you do that is by dragging and dropping it on the game object in the scene view or you can drag and drop it here on the left in the inspector window like I have Okay, so you can see that I've added the cube controller script. And if you're going to do this, just make sure that uh, the inspector window shows all these components for the game object that you're trying to impart some behavior to. Okay, so if you have like a hundred game objects, you don't want to end up adding scripts to the wrong game object. So double click and let's open this up in Visual Studio. Okay. So as you can see, by default, uh, all this code is already added for me and I don't have to, you know, kind of physically type each line out. So I have the cube controller class here, which extends from the mono behavior class. And these events, void start, void update, are part of the mono behavior um, class. And we also have these two, uh, these namespaces that I'm using up here, the system namespace and the unity engine namespace. So we went over these uh, namespaces and what mono behavior is in previous tutorials. So if you haven't watched that, go ahead and watch those first. Okay. So inside the start method, let's write debug.log uh, and let's write start. Okay and end off with a semicolon which is like a period in c sharp so basically it's a full stop and you want to end your statements of code with a um, semicolon okay now 
in the void update method so inside the update method let's go ahead and write a debug dot log and then write update okay and then finish off with a semicolon and then control s to save your file so we haven't written any code to move the cube to the left but let's go ahead and try this out anyways first so opening up my unity 3d editor i'm going to press on play and let's see what happens in the console okay okay so out here in the console you can see that the string start is logged to the console and the start event method is called on the first frame of the game okay then after that we can see the update string is logged to the console and this is being logged continuously every frame so if i run the game again out here on the right side you'll see it being updated pretty fast okay now let me clear the console and come back to our script. So we're going to write one line of code which will move this cube to the left along the x-axis. So this dot transform dot position is equal to this dot transform dot position plus new vector three oops not two three okay which takes uh it's going to take three values so minus one f because we're moving to the left on the x-axis and zero and uh zero for the y and z axis because we don't want to move on those coordinates and then times so multiplied by time dot delta time okay and then finish off with a, a semicolon so this so this out here okay this keyword refers to the game to the game object that the script is attached to which for us is this cube okay the transform property stores the position rotation and scale of a game object to which a script is attached so the transform property actually stores the x y and z coordinates or values for the position rotation and scale properties okay and a time okay not times dot delta times but let's talk about vector 3 a bit now the vector 3 uh, is a data structure and it has a 3d direction so it's going to store x y and z coordinates in 3d space and lastly coming to times dot delta time this allows you to move an object n units per second so we're going to be uh, moving minus one f units Per second and if you delete this then the cube will move one unit per frame and it's actually going to move so fast it's you know it's going to disappear off the screen and I've talked about each of these in a separate video tutorial so the transform property vector 3 and times dot delta time dot delta time so control s to save your video and back in my unity 3d editor let's hit play and there you go so you see that the cube is moving one unit to the left continuously per frame and that's all for this video so if you like this tutorial go ahead and hit subscribe and like